Uh, all right, let us start. Uh, so let us try to finish our search for uh, smallest and second smallest. Uh, sort of let us try to converge to this code. And of course, I forgot my notes. Uh, but uh, let me remind you the state of the thing. We build a machine for doing reduction. Reduction machine. We build a thing for doing very fast lists called list pool. Uh, and now we have to combine all of that so that it produces the final algorithm. Uh, if you do it well, the final algorithm should not take more than four or five lines of code. So let us see how we could do that. So first of all, uh, what we need to do, if you remember one thing which were not done, thank you, uh, one thing which was not done, uh, we needed, we promised ourselves that we will uh, define a function, we'll find minimum element for lists, all right? Uh, anyone, how many of you did it? Okay, one third. So let us try somebody who didn't do it, uh, help us, or would you like to try to help us? Sure. Okay, so the file with the function magically opened, do you want to type or do you want to say? You will speak. Okay, we go down and here, lo and behold, is the signature. So what do we take? We have a pool, we have a list, we have a comparison, right? And we need to make this function to return, what should it return? It actually says so. But what is it? It returns a list type. If you look here, okay. that's what oh, it I says. see. It returns a list type. It returns a list type, which is a sublist which will point to the, to the uh, which first element will contain the minimum value. Here I went through a long and painful soul searching. So you know, now you could rest a little while while I'm talking. Uh, because in general, we don't really need this function. If we did things well, this function would be given to us for free. Anybody knows what I mean? We do have, after all, a function <coughs> for finding min element, the general purpose function. What don't we have? We don't have, thank you very much. We don't have iterators. We decided to cut corners. It's all here in for me. We decided to cut corners and didn't provide iterators. So here I was spending, and you know, you could ask Paul, we were sort of exchanging mail even on Tuesday or Monday, whatever, sort of saying, should I do this or should I do that? Should I introduce iterators and use a function? And uh, I decided to cut corners, not to introduce iterators. Let me explain why. Because I want to get to the end of our journey with, but then we will have to go back to the list. There is something which we will need to do. We will need to provide these lists with iterators, not just to complete this class, but we will need not just to complete the list pool class. I mean, but, uh, we need to, we will need to provide them because there are a bunch of very interesting algorithms on lists which we could obtain if we get iterators. Specifically, we'll be able to construct, let me make sort of a preview of where we would be going. For example, we will discover that our Binary counter, remember binary counter, is a marvelous way 
of sorting linked lists. All right? Sort of. And of course, that will show that this binary count wasn't introduced just to solve the problem which solves. It's a general purpose machine. So, you know, and then we will eventually discover that a bunch of other algorithms will, will be solvable with the help of this one particular general purpose device. So, but in the meanwhile, to, to proceed here, we're going to write function which is logically unnecessary. The correct path is to provide iterators and use std mean element to find it. But Adam will be brave and write a function which we do not really need. OK, lead the way. So uh, what are the inputs again? The it says right there. OK, so the pool is the general list pool that we're, is input. The, what's the second input? The, the list where we're looking for the minimum element. That's the input. And comparison function, which compares values in the list. OK. All right. Um, let's initialize current min. Uh, so. Type. Okay. What you would initialize it to? You should let him. You should let him say more. Well, if the list is empty, is it okay to return that empty list? Ah, uh, you tell me. Is it? By the way, is it or not? Yes, it's okay because it's just pointing to an empty spot. Yes. And the person can check themselves if it's empty because we made that function. Public. Yes, yes, they can. So let's initialize it to the first. Let's see, pool. Oh, sorry, no. Uh, list. What are our functions? Uh, dot value. Nah. Why would we want to do that? Um. Uh, list, I, I guess just initialize it to list. Yes. Okay. And then uh, we want to iterate through the list until we hit. Tell us how man. Okay. While. While. This is always good. Um, Did we create the dot is end function? Yes, we have dot is end function. Okay, so while list, uh, while, uh, sorry, not list dot is end. Uh, oh, it's pool. Okay, while pool dot, while, while not pool dot is end, uh, input the list. Yeah, that's, that makes most sense, I think. All right. Um, and then inside the loop. I expect this noise now. You know what happens when the computers melt? There's noise. So I suspect that there will be noise of a melting CPU. Uh, this, you don't think this loop's going to exit? No, the loop might exit, but what you're going to write, let's see what you're going to write inside the loop. Uh, let's see. So the value will be, I see. Um, we want to compare the next value to the current min. And at that point, the CPU will melt. Because we may compare against a uh, the, an empty list. Well, if you're going to the next. <coughs> right, right, right. 
Okay. Uh, while okay, so sure. While not pool dot is end list, and uh, so what are the functions? Basically, what the the next one is also not empty. Yes, that's the function called next. Is it on the pool? So pool dot next of list input list. Uh, so so while uh, again not on that. So while not pool dot let's say dot next list dot. Oh wait, sorry, sorry. No, I did wrong. Dot no list not pool dot end. is end. Yeah, right there. And then input the pool dot next list. Okay. So then we know that the current one and the next one are not empty, so we can compare them. So if um, this uh, CMP and then open paren, if we want to get the values, so uh, pool dot value list uh, input list. Let's see. We only want to switch if the second one is lower. So how about the first input is uh, pool dot value, uh, and the input is pool dot next of list. So yeah, right there. Um, pool dot next open paren list close paren um, comma pool dot value open paren list. Um. I don't think it's a good idea, because think about what you will be doing. You will be running along and comparing first with second, second with third, third with fourth. Is it what you mean? No, you're correct. I thought it's Sorry, uh, possibly okay, so what you mean. The second input is current min. Actually, wait. So then why are we, okay. The current min is the... Okay, yeah, current min. I don't think so. <laughs> Sorry, that. Shouldn't you get a value of something? Yes, pool dot value of current min. Okay. And then in that case, we will, uh, yeah, open bracket. We will set current min to pool dot next up. Of list. Yes. Do we need to do something else? There's already a word. Let's see. This is going to be a wonderful uh, piece of code because, first of all, it will not terminate usually, and then it will be doing lots and lots of. All right. Same comparison. So what pool, or sorry, sorry, uh, list equals what is it? Um, uh, pool dot next of list, and then return current min out of the loop. Right, so the idea is, of course, that we need to. Okay. Now, do you think we could some somehow massage it to to make it? A little bit more elegant. So, what what would many people find annoying about this piece of code? Anybody? Paul finds something on. Hernan. Two people find. Oh, you Nick. Okay, Run Ping. Yeah, you see what Run Ping and I suspect the rest of the crowd find annoying is that we do pull next, then we do pull next, then we do pull next, and then we do pull next. It is, and they think it's annoying. All right, so let's uh, create a variable for it. What are we, yes, yes. You see, here at, in, in some sense, this is an algorithm which, you know, checks two guys for end at every iteration. 
this relates. These two problems are actually related. That is a little bit too much, isn't it? By how many, do you think? Yeah, by one. Yes, yes. I mean, we need to check once. That's very clear. Otherwise, you know, bad things will happen. Right? But it's very good. Do you know? I mean, this is, this is, by the way, how we all write code. First you write non-terminating code, then you write ugly terminating code, and then you, you sort of gradually get to a point which goes, I do it all the time. Well, after 40 years, it takes shorter time, you know. But so uh, some people would say that maybe we could move the first test out once and for all. Yeah? And you know, there, there could be multiple arguments. Some people say, well, we don't even need this guy if the list is very empty. Because what's the point? So we could once and for all solve the issue of an empty list. Tell us how to solve the issue. OK, so the first line in the function just compare the list. So if uh, pool dot is, is end uh, input list. Wonderful. And then what shouldn't it be? And then no, it should be when you enter. You don't need to do anything. So if 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 I am at the end, bye bye. Do, do you agree that that makes perfect sense? Perfect sense. Yes. Now, observe. You have a perfectly good dereferenceable guy who is a possible candidate. Right here. Right. But then, what do you need to do? You no longer need to look at him. Right. So. Uh. Should we check the second one out of the loop, or just go in the while, fix the while condition? Um, I wouldn't be fixing while condition. I will just advance. Oh, right. Yeah, obviously. Uh, sorry. List equals pool dot next of list. Now, what do we need to do in the loop? First thing. Check if that one is empty. So. Yeah. Only, only the first condition. Only the first condition is needed. The second condition is no longer interesting. And then people suggested creating a variable for the next, so we don't have to keep calling. I don't think they should want to listen to this. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. So, sorry. The, so the, the list now is the next. The list is the next, yes. All right, so yeah, uh, exactly what you get rid of the pool.next right there and the extra parens. And then, uh, yep, let's see, current min equals just list. Just list. See how nice it is? Next, OK. You want to swap the comparison between list and current min? Does current min want to be on the left? No. Shouldn't we only update if? OK, I let him, since he started it, OK, you answer your own question. You want the first one that you saw that was unstable. So you want the first one you saw to be, to remain the min. Right. And therefore, that's right, I can't remember. What, which. This is less than. Read this okay. as less than. So he answered his question. This is the best thing. We want to have a system where everybody could answer their own question. You know, saves lots of energy, right? So of course, there are some people who would say, well, couldn't we change it a little bit and put this inside the loop? We can, but let's not bother about it. This is a very elegant little loop. Okay? Everybody agrees it's an elegant little loop? Of course, we'll throw it away the moment we have iterators. Because we will basically replace this with what? Plus, plus. This replace with plus, plus. 
and this value will replace with star when we get it. And we already have this code. If you actually go back, we wrote the code for minimum element, which does exactly that. Everybody is happy? Okay, now comes the hard part. Do you want to go for the hard part, or you want to pass along the spoon? Uh, let's keep going. Okay, very good, very good. Now Ryan will create a file called, sorry, that I do not remember, uh, called min underscore element one underscore two dot h. Mean element one, two, you know. Okay. And we basically sort of done, here we could do two things. We could either go uh, backwards from top down or try to build it. Let us, let us do it the way I always prefer uh, to, to recommend. Let us go to the very end. Let us imagine that you have all the materials to build the stuff somehow. Uh, you don't. And to write the main loop, which will find mean and uh, first mean and second mean. Okay? Do you have, do you have some uh, idea how they will look? There should be about four lines there. Anybody knows what the first line is going to be? No, this is inside, very deeply inside. There are four lines which will do the algorithm. So could we describe the algorithm now sort of using our components? So first we will do so some, some kind of a while loop adding to counter, yes? That's the first line. The second line, we will reduce the counter and get the result. And the result will have what? Anybody knows what result will have? When, what? The minimum and the list, right? So we will have that. After we are done with that, what we are going to do? So we already have two lines. We will use the function which we just wrote for the list with appropriate comparison, some kind of a comparison. Because it might not be the comparison you think we got. And then finally, what we will do? We take the first winner from whatever we got up to the reduce, yes? And we combine it with whatever we got out of mean. We create a pair and return it. Yes? So that's the plan. And then we need to create all the scaffolding which would allow it to happen. Yes? Oh, they told us. They just answered that. They just answered that. Remember, the binary counter returns whatever you store in it. Didn't they? Don't we know that? And they said that what will they, the counter will return is an element, whatever the element might be, and the list. Somebody said that. I think Bert said. Did you, Nick said that. Why doesn't it just return the list? There's been two no, it isn't. No, it isn't, and you will need an extra element in the list. So the list will, the head of the list is the, the first winner, and the rest of that list contains the second one. Yes, and that will require an extra cons, an extra allocation. Right? But you could do it like that. You are saving on a pair, yes, but you are not really saving because you are pushing it there. There is no, I mean, the storage is the storage, but this, your storage will be, you, you need to do this one extra operation. We could do it his way too. I will not call my to get a pair. I will use that 
Yes, yes, yes. But I will not even use the superficial proof. It will be just that. Okay? We could do it his way, but let us let us try. You realize that you know there could be multiple solutions, and but let us assume that what we have. Let us go with Nick. It so happens it sells you my solution, but uh, <laughs> uh, he's very diplomatic. Observing, says, "I like his solution too." It is slightly less efficient. So uh, let us see, but I actually claim that things will work very well. How do I know? By the way, anybody knows how I know? I wrote the code. So, uh, you know, it might be, you know, of course I want to pretend that I stand here and generate the code like so, but uh, I have the notes where the code exists, right? And I rewrote it several times and tried all kinds of different ways. Uh, and so should have you, in some sense, because unless you get some experience with this code, like, okay, so let us try to write these bottom lines. So let us go and write the closing brace. So what was the what is the lo, lo, last line going to be? Return. Yeah, it's going to return, and what it's going to uh, standard pair. Or actually, it's always easier to say standard make pair. Make pair yes, uh, I'm guessing an iterator. Nah, don't say iterator. I would venture to say we we say the guy whom we returned from the reduce. Yeah. In one. Let's call it temp. <laughs> so it's temp dot first. I mean, wait, this is just a temporary thing. We just need a hold. Did I call it temp? <laughs> it's a horrible name. Okay, let's argue. If it's a horrible name, what would you call it? You know what? Okay, guys. I'll go. I'll, I call it temp. I, I'm not going to. So we know that it's mean one dot first. That is, that has to be. What? Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, and then the comma. And then the tricky thing will happen. So we need to call the function that we and just And let made. us say, and let's not call the function right away. As you see, there is a tricky thing. Let us just say dot, 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 and close parent and put semicolon. Because I know something which you don't yet know. What? <laughs> uh, I could say it, but I want you to derive it. So here. Let us write the previous line, which will lead us to this dot, dot, dot. So what's the previous line thing is going to be? Reduce. No, no, no. The previous line, the previous before we return. Reduce is going to be some somewhere. Remember that there is sort of the structure which you already explained to me, or someone explained to me, is that first, Lunping explained to me, so was first we have a loop where we're throwing things into the counter. Then we get reduce and get this guy mean one out of reduce. Then we need to use this whatever we got out of there to find what? The second min. The list. Yes. And how, how would you find it? The function we just wrote. Let us write it, but what, what, what would you do with it? Return it if it's valid. You see, the problem, there is a tricky, tricky thing. Nobody sees that yet? If there's only one element? The 
end or what minimum return has to be translated into the end corresponding to? There is even worse thing. The list which is returned could be empty. Yes, but more importantly, what we need to check, we need somehow store this guy into some variable so that we could check it. Yes? What else needs to be done? No, we do not need to do anything about the list. Why? Because the pool goes. The moment we exit the function, we are golden. This is the beauty. I mean, this is very good. It works. It's very persistent as long <laughs> as we are inside the function. Right? So we know. Yes? So here I have to report. I didn't call in element list right away. I checked if the associated list was empty. If so, last. Otherwise, value of element list are. You could do that too. You could do that too. You could do that too. But in, it's, in some sense, it's sort of, you might as well ask because you will get it. Min list will return it to you right away. By doing exactly the comparison, if, if you think about it, it will do exactly what you would do. You're, you're just rolling out one iteration. You can write the whole thing in one line. But you can say if uh, min one dot. And we will. And we will. And we will. And we will. Right? Yes, and we will. But first we need to get. So basically, okay, there is another thing. We could compose the whole thing as potentially one line, but it, it, it cannot be for one very simple reason. Because what we need, the guy which will be returned by this thing, we need to do two things with it. We need to test it if it's the end, and then if not, get the value. Yes. Dot second question mark uh, last. Okay, why don't you come and write? Come, 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 come. Could you use VI, right? And compare. So I, I think min1 is a bad name, by the way, because it's not just min1. It's the min1 on the list. Where does the compare go? This is why I call the temp. <laughs> uh, yes, it does work. Whether it is uh, 
it's hard to say. Uh, I would be somewhat reluctant because of the enormous length of this line. Right? So uh, my, my line is pretty long, but it's not that long. But it's pretty long, too. So what? No, I'm not going to be. What well, this one? Yes. So, so yes. We can, but one element list again, sort of. You, we could do that too. Yes, we can. Let us wait and see how it develops. So, yes, this is correct. Now you go back and Adam will continue his painful process of writing code backwards. Reduce. But we know that reduce will return something or other. With something or other they now call M no, what did they call it? Min one. Min one. Should have been called ten. <laughs> Standard pair of let's see type uh, I Good. comma uh, list type, but I guess that's also templated. So uh, this is tricky. This is tricky. Uh, do we get it out of the list pool? What is the natural what is the natural thing to use? What is the natural thing to use? An actual templated list or vector or container? Let me, let me tell you how, I mean, I'll teach you all kind of bad habits. You don't need to know. Is it some kind of list type? You think? Yeah. Just say it. Yeah. No, it's not the colon, colon list. It's some kind of list type. You will have to do colon, colon, subplace. No. Again, guys. You're allowed infinitely many type defs someplace. Let's write code. Right? So it's list type and I, we, we will have to define it. And it's somebody talk, gave you a bad name. So min you, one. Min one. Equals, we have some counter. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be some kind of counter. What's a good name of some kind of counter? Yes. <laughs> Counter dot reduce. See, this is backward code. Right? No, that's not. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Counter dot reduce. Yeah. Counter dot reduce. So we did this. We managed to, to sort of write three out of four lines. Now let's go for the first line. So what do we need to do first? Add everything to the counter. Yeah, I would guess so. How do we add things to the counter? In a loop. Uh, so while, uh, assuming we have two iterators, first does not equal last. Yeah, it's all. I mean, we know it will be some place where first not equal last. Um, counter dot add uh, first plus plus. This is good, but you know it requires some more arguments. Or oh, does it require? No, not really. Does it? I forget everything. Yes, yes, of course, of course, of course. Because you are telling us that you are adding an iterator, and you should be adding what? 
What are you returning? Look at what you return from the counter. Uh, two iterators. No, you are not returning two. Why couldn't you just read what you're returning? Make a pair of what? Just it says it right there. No, 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 no. right here. From the counter, what do you use? You return from the counter. An iterator and a list type. Yes, so what should we be putting in the counter? An empty list type. And in the I mean, whatever goes into the counter comes out of the counter. These are bits. You know. So uh, first plus plus comma. And shouldn't it be some kind of a pair? What kind of a pair? Standard make pair of first comma uh new list is that public function that we have no, no, no. Oh, okay what kind what kind of list do we put there anybody knows what kind of list should go there is it going to yes it should be an empty list how do you obtain an empty list how anybody knows how we obtain an empty list Full dot end. We you know we tried empty. What is it empty? End. You see our automatic typing device concluded. So now we we sort of that's the code, guys. This you know there will be no more code. Of course, this will not work because you have to do lots of other stuff, not lots, but a little of other stuff. This is you need to define all these things. So again, the beauty, of course, is the code which does the work. This is the only thing which will generate instructions. We'll have to write stuff on top, but this is the only instruction generating lines. Right? So then what do you need to do? Anybody could suggest? What, what is the next step? Construct the counter. Construct the object. So there are three things which we need to do. First, we need to write code. Right? Then we need to define, in general, I'm trying to generalize the process. We write the code. And I'm teaching you, you know, you all learned that first thing, you, you define abstract things, then you do specific things. I'm teaching you, quite intentionally, the opposite approach. You first, you write code. You write the algorithm. That's the algorithm. Then you figure out what you need for the algorithm. Right? So, and for the algorithm, you need some objects, yes? How many objects do you need? At least two, the counter, the pool. You need a counter and the pool. This is pretty good. So you will need to construct. Do we need? Let me check. Uh, well, we are actually, yes. We're actually at this point. And this compare, you might be surprised, might not be quite this, the compare you think. Right? So we. we it needs to be defined, but what it will be, we do not quite know. Oh, by the way, just so that we're not confused with the outer compare, uh, why don't we call it? What did we call it? Uh, I cannot tell you its name without giving myself away. Uh, uh, no, I'll give myself away. Why don't we call it compare? underscore d ref. Do you understand why? Because we're not just comparing the guys, because the guys which we are storing are iterators. We don't want to compare iterators. We want to compare values. Yes? In this guy. So we will have to, to have some object compared to ref which will do that. Which, which we will we'll get. Everything will happen in a due time. Actually, we might even finish this stuff today. Uh, okay, so 
one thing we so what is the last thing we will need to define what is, what is which one needs what do we need pool first or compare first or or counter first Pool. Try to reason. Why do we need pool first? The counter needs to be typed on that uh, list type of the pool. And moreover, counter needs to counter is going to do list operations, wouldn't it? So it will have to have some kind of reference to the pool pointer to, to, to the pool inside him one way or the other everybody follows my logic right. equals right so but oh counter doesn't but the operation in the counter does and counter needs to know operation operation needs to know the pool yes so it's transitive Point taken, but. All right. Uh, list pool. No, 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 no. I would still go backward. I will persist in this writing things backward. Because it, in some sense, guys, it's much easier because eventually everything falls out. So uh, what type of a count is? Do you know? Called binary counter. Of. With some types. Do you know these types right now? Say no. No. This is always a good answer. Therefore, you know that counter is of some type. What's a good name for this type? I claim counter type is a perfectly good name for a type of the counter. It, does not, it allows you not to think. Delay thinking. Be lazy. So you say counter type. Counter. Counter. And what does counter take? Anybody remembers? To construct it. Operation, operation and a zero. Operation and zero. Do we know what operation is? I told you the answer, guys. You always say what? No. So, but it's some kind of object. Somebody constructed. What's a good name for an operation? Op. I say op. That's the beauty. You, know. you, you sort of push it away, push it away. So you say op and zero. But zero is actually easy. Could we actually figure out what our zero is? Anybody wants to suggest a zero? Last. Last and and pull that end. It's a natural zero. Okay. We successfully wrote, constructed one object. Then We need to figure out what this op is. And again, what I recommend, it's like, you know, I don't know. All the good programmers are very lazy guys. Because if they were not lazy, they would be doing it with their own hands. That's why they invented programming languages and things like that. So that's what I advocate. Be, imitate good programmers, be lazy. Meaning the previous line will define an operation but it will define an operation by basically doing a bunch of deferred stuff because it's we need a counter operation yeah operation what is the type of this operation do you know no exactly so what do you write you come up with a name counter operation type say you yes counter operation op type for operation type counter operation type why not? And what, what's the name of the object you're constructing? You know that because you just, 
And what will it take? Anybody could figure out? The original comparator? It needs some kind of a comparator, yes. Whether original or not, we do not quite know. But we do know that it will need a pool. Uh, I defer on this competitor guy. Why I defer on this competitor guy? Let me honestly tell you. Because the competitor guy, again, is going to go through this. It's going to do dereferencing. And we already name it. So I would say, couldn't we possibly use this guy for that? And I say, yeah. And then we'll try to make it somehow to work. Guys, we're almost done. We're almost done. Programming with smoke and mirrors. Okay. So, okay. We did that. So now, uh, do we have comp deref? No, we don't. Uh, what do we do about it? We need to define it. What, do we know its type? No. So why don't we do the sort of, again, the lazy thing? We write compare the reference type and what's the name? and what it's going to take. That we know. You see, we're going to have this outer compare. So let us give it to it. And it will do whatever the right thing. We'll decide what it needs to do. It's actually a very simple thing. But I don't quite want to do it now. And now what we need to do is to figure out what, what else is missing? The pool. Let's construct a pool. What's the type of the pool? What's the type of the pool? Anybody know? Uh, we know the, at least the name of it, list pool. Couldn't we say list pool? And we know who lives in it. Except we don't know list type. We know that I lists in it. I is its value type. And we don't quite know what its CUDA type. Remember there, Ryan is doing something. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, you could take the chair. Okay. So the, uh, you know, we need to put arguments. If we, no, no, no. With list pool, I didn't really want to bother with list pool type. This we could explicitly say because it's list pool angle bracket. What's the value type? I. We know that. That's, and for the CUDA type. You know, to be safe, what could we use? It actually doesn't matter. Size, we could use size t. Or not to annoy John. John is not here. Oh, he's here. Uh, we, we will say std size underscore t. Do we get your approval? We got his approval. So we're almost done. There are a bunch of type defs. There are a bunch of little classes which we need to write. But we are sort of done. Uh, what is
Okay. I'm forgetting. Guys, I'm losing it. It's trivial. Uh, so now we'll look and say which types we, we need to define. One type is very clear we need to define is list type. Could we define list type? Type def. Yeah? Type def, list type. But we could, we could replace dot, dot, dot. We have all the information there. What's our list? We, yeah. It's i and size t. So, of course, you need to write here, you have to know this C++ stuff. You need to know that you have to say type name. You just have to. So, you say type name, list plus t colon colon list type space list type. It's just mumbo jumbo. But so which are the types we need? Uh, we need to define counter type. Let's try to define counter type. Uh, again, here, since it's, you know, let us make it as trivial as possible. So we'll say counter type is binary counter. Angle bracket. Pair. Nah. Remember that we can do this very nice thing. We could default we could give it just one argument operation type and then it will attempt extract so we'll just say counter operation type we'll have i mean we're we're deferring you know sort of okay and here we have to bite the bullet we have to come up uh, do we have to bite the bullet? Yeah, we have to bite two bullets. Uh, we have to bite the bullet and come up with a real name of a class, which we're going to define. And uh, I suggest here you guys will probably not like it, but I define a class which is with the name of op underscore mean one two. We will have to define it. And it takes three arguments, angle bracket i. It takes the argument uh, size t. And it takes the argument comp deref type. Here I am cheating. I'm sort of. Uh, did I call it compared to reference type? Uh, I actually called it comp to reference type, but yours is better. It's very good. It's very good. My, you see, this is artificial intelligence. Sort of, and, uh, well, actually, it's natural intelligence. <laughs> so, yes. And uh, so we do that, and it's called counter operation type. And then finally, we will need to define uh, what it's called. Uh, there's one, one thing missing. Right? I'm forgetting. The, uh, compared to reference, where is Yes. So what we will do is call it compared to reference type, and it's going to be compared to reference of compare, capital compare. We're actually done with the body of the function, guys. Most of it, which is just a bunch of type defs, which sort of. We, we absolutely speaking, we do not need neither the type defs nor these things. 
but then these four lines are going to be unreadable. This is why we create, create all these things. Uh, let's, okay, lead us in writing the signature. We're done with the body. All right, um, template. See? Uh, open angle bracket, type name, I, comma. Do we need any comma? We need to compare. Yes. Type name, uh, compare, capital C. Compare, yeah. Is that a good? Closed bracket. And what we're returning? Uh, return type is the pair, so std, STD colon, pair. colon, pair. Right. Yes, uh, I, comma, I. I, comma, I, very good. This is very good. And what's our name? I, you know, I gave you a clue. The file name gives you a clue to my intended name. Show them, the, uh, is there a way you could show? Oh no, this is inferior editor. So, uh, control G will show. There you go, min element one, two. And what will it take? Um, I first, uh, I first. So, so yeah, min element one, two, open paren, I first, comma, I last. Very good. Uh, compare C, uh, CMP. Yes. Super. Uh, okay, so we are that close to being completely done, guys. So what else do we need? We need to define potentially two classes. What we will discover that it's easier to define three classes. One class will be invisible to us. Okay? Very good. You are doing great. Thank you. So even people who don't do homework are not totally helpless, which is good. The food is ready, guys. <laughs>